scientists woke a god who had been asleep for 10,000 years. He was frustrated with humanity and decided to destroy it. Today we will recap the story of the 2012 movie Prometheus. The movie opens up with a landscape with grassland, mountains, rivers and a waterfall. A human looking creature makes its way to the top of the waterfall, removes its hooded robe and drinks from the little bowl it is carrying. After it drinks from the bowl, a pebble shaped object in the sky retreats back into space. The contents of the bowl cause the creature to begin disintegrating, and it plummets in the waterfall. The next scene opens up on the Isle of Skye in 2089. Charlie Holloway and Elizabeth Snow, archaeologists and lovers, find a cave that they believe is clues to the origin of humans. The walls of the cave have drawings which show that people need to go far into space for answers to all their questions. The next scene takes us four years into the future. In December 2093, the spaceship Prometheus is on its way to an undisclosed location in space. The next scene shows David, an android reading Elizabeth's memories using neurovision technology while she is in stasis. He sees a memory of Elizabeth as a little girl discussing the afterlife with her father. From this discussion, we get to know that Elizabeth's mother has passed away. After viewing Elizabeth's memories, David exercises and then eats his breakfast. He also continues his ancient European language lesson before watching a movie and completing the rest of his waking routine. Just after he is done, the computer aboard the spaceship alerts him that they are already close to their destination. He goes to the cockpit and opens the blinds on the windshield. He is transfixed by the sight of what happens to be a planet with one ring around it. He returns to where the other crew members are placed in stasis and notices that Meredith Vickers, the person in charge of the expedition, has woken up from her hibernation. She is doing push-ups. She asks him how long the expedition had taken, and he replies that it has taken precisely two years and four months. She also wants to know if any of the other crew members have passed on, to which he replies in negative. Meredith then instructs him to wake them up. A voice can be heard telling the crew members to drink fluids and consume high-calorie shakes as they eat. Meredith sees Yannick, the captain attending to a Christmas tree. She is flabbergasted and asks what it is. Yannick replies by saying that it is Christmas. She then informs him that mission briefing will begin soon. In another part of the ship, Milburn, a biologist, introduces himself to Fifield, who categorically tells him that he is not interested in making friends. Mission briefing begins with Meredith introducing herself to the rest of the crew. David then puts up a holographic video from a tablet in his hand. In the video, Peter Wayland, the head of the organization that organized and funded the expedition, tells them they are here to find the engineers who presumably created humans. These engineers would be able to tell people where they came from, what their purpose is, and what awaits them in the afterlife. Wayland decided to organize this expedition after he had met with Charlie and Elizabeth and heard about the rock paintings that tell the way to space. Wayland appoints Charlie and Elizabeth to lead the expedition. When Wayland is done speaking, Elizabeth and Charlie take over and explain the mission further. Charlie shows the audience many archaeological finds from different parts of the world. All findings show the same pictogram of people worshipping giant creatures that point to the stars. There was no way ancient civilizations could have known about the distant galaxy they were pointing to. This galaxy has its own sun and the only planet where life is possible. It is the planet that their spaceship will soon arrive at. Fifield and Milburn voice their skepticism and ask for proof. Elizabeth says she doesn't have to prove anything and that she simply believes in her theory. After the briefing, Meredith calls Elizabeth and Charlie and tells them that they are not to make any contact with the engineers. They are to report back to her if they find them. She also voices her doubt about the existence of the engineers. The company that Meredith works for paid a lot to get the crew to this distant planet. Therefore, the expedition will carry out the plans the company made, which don't include friendly contact with other civilizations. Charlie and Elizabeth were taken only because it was the will of Wayland. But now the man doesn't decide anything. Charlie inquires about the progress of David's lessons. David answers that he has studied enough ancient languages to be able to speak to the engineers. The ship starts to land, and they realize that this planet is quite similar to the Earth, although its mountains are higher than Everest. Captain Yannick and his assistants land the spaceship beside a circular artificial structure that Charlie notices before the others. As the survey team suits up to explore the structure, Charlie Charlie asks David why he is putting on a space suit since he can't breathe and the poisonous air can't affect him. David explains that he was designed as a human because humans were more comfortable relating with their kind. He further explains that wearing a suit helps him look human. They head out to the structure in three vehicles. A scan reveals that the structure is hollow. They get out of the vehicles and into the structure proper. They go in and radio back to the spaceship to inform the captain. Fifield and Milburn are the last to enter. Fifield releases two special sensors to map the area within the dome-shaped structure. They get to a place with stalagmites and what looks like springs of water. They discover that the air here is breathable and Charlie proceeds to remove his helmet. When nothing happens to him, the others follow his example. They keep going deeper into the structure. David finds a slab of rock in the wall with a sort of code and some sticky stuff. He feels it is impressive. Before the others know what is happening, he uses his knowledge of ancient languages and the sticky stuff to trace the patterns of the code. This results in holographic human-like creatures running through the structure. David allows them to run right through him. 
but the others duck out of the way. This leads the exploration team to discover the decapitated remains of one of the engineers. It seems like it was decapitated by a door. Back at the ship, Meredith is shocked, while Yannick mocks her disbelief. Fifield makes a ruckus about having seen enough and convinces Milburn to follow him back to the ship. With Milburn and Fifield done, the rest turn their attention to the body and the door. Elizabeth uses a carbon reader to estimate that the body is about 2,000 years old. While David climbs to what is presumably the key to unlock the door with the aid of a ladder, David opens the door before the others are aware, and they find the head of the body on the other side. They are now in a chamber filled with peculiar-looking vases and a sculpture of a human-looking face. David tries to examine one of the vases, but Elizabeth stops him, telling him not to touch anything. But when the others move off to other parts of the chamber, David examines one of the vases. He notices a black fluid coming from the top of the vase and proclaims that the fluid is organic. Elizabeth notices the murals on the walls changing and they start leaving the chamber, but not before taking the head of the decapitated engineer they found at the door. Yannick notices the onset of a storm. He calls out to the exploration crew to start making their way out. Meredith adds that they have only 15 minutes to reach the ship. Elizabeth and Ford put the head into a transparent bag while Elizabeth calls out to Charlie and David. David secretly puts one of the vases in a bag before rushing out. Black worms come to life and start moving under David's feet. They make their way to the vehicles outside, start them and begin driving towards the ship. The storm is close behind them as they head to the ship. Then as they get into the ship, something happens. The bag containing the head falls off. Elizabeth runs back to get it, and the storm blows blows her away. Charlie follows her in one of the vehicles. The vehicle is blown away, but he eventually gets to her. David comes to their aid and hitches them and the bag to the ship with a cord. The cord pulls them back to safety within the ship. Charlie starts to berate Elizabeth for running back out to save the bag while David calmly asks her if she's alright. She ignores Charlie and tells David that she is okay. Yannick asks about Milburn and Fifield. Elizabeth wonders if they are not yet back on the ship. However, the two men had lost their way in the labyrinthine corridors of the dome-shaped structure. Yannick contacts them and tells them to keep calm and wait for rescue in the morning. The guys agree to wait out the storm outside the ship. They only ask to let Charlie and Elizabeth know that the pair are too obsessed with aliens. In another part of the ship, Elizabeth examines the head with the help of Ford and David. Meredith comes in to watch them as they finish checking the head for any contagion. They don't find any. They discover that the head is actually covered by a helmet. The three of them remove the helmet and see the actual head of the engineer. Elizabeth instructs Ford to use a device to send electricity into its brain. This is how they plan to convince the nervous system of the engineer that it is alive. She initially sets it at 30 amps but increases it up to 60 amps. The face starts to move. Then the scientists attempt to reduce the voltage. However, the device appears to be out of order. They have to contain it as it has started releasing an unpleasant odor. The head eventually disintegrates in the containment box. Frustrated, Charlie takes a drink and leaves the lab. But Elizabeth doesn't want to give up on the research and plans to take a closer look at the remaining fragments of the engineer. The next scene shows David speaking with someone in a stasis pod. As he exits, Meredith stops him and asks him what the person said. David is initially reluctant to tell her, but she threatens him. He eventually relays the mysterious man's words to Meredith. Try harder. David then removed the vase he brought into the ship from the refrigerator. Meanwhile, Elizabeth and Ford are examining the DNA of the engineer. They discover that its DNA matches that of humans. David also brings out an object covered in slimy liquid from the cylinder. This object looks like a bottle. David pours a drop of dark liquid and carefully examines it. Meanwhile, Elizabeth tries to figure out what took out the engineers. In the next scene, David brings a bottle of champagne to Charlie. The man offers a drink to the robot. But David refuses. Charlie makes distasteful comments about David's origin. David responds by asking him to apply those statements to himself. Charlie laughs it off. However, the man is disappointed with the expedition. He hoped to get the answers to all the questions about life from the engineers. David then asks him what he will do to find the answers he came all the way to find. Charlie answers and says that he will do anything and everything. David then offers a glass of champagne to Charlie, mixing a drop of the mysterious alien liquid into the drink. Charlie doesn't notice anything and drinks the champagne. Meanwhile, Fifield and Milburn are still lost. They come across hardened bodies of engineers. On the ship, the probe in the dome-shaped structure picks up a life form, which triggers an alarm. Yannick goes to check. He then informs the two lost men through radio, and they freak out. They decide to go in the opposite direction of the location of the life form. Elizabeth is now in her room, recording a video. When Charlie comes in, he gives her a rose, and they talk for a bit about the mission. She tells him about the matching DNAs, and he gets a bit emotional. They eventually sleep together. Elsewhere, Yannick and Meredith have a conversation that ends with Meredith inviting him to her room. The storm is still raging outside. Meanwhile, Fifield and Milburn find the chamber that Elizabeth's group found earlier. They are just looking around and chatting when Fifield notices something moving in the black liquid on the floor. Milburn goes to take a look at it. He sees a snake-like creature. He tries to examine it closely, and another one appears on the scene. He calls it in. He sticks his hand out to it, 
and it bites his fingers and wraps around his arm, breaking it. When Fifield tries to help, the creature sprays his helmet with a corrosive liquid. Fifield backs off and falls face first into the black liquid, while Milburn does not survive. It's morning, and Charlie wakes up in Elizabeth's room and notices a reddish tint at the corner of his eyes. At that moment, Yannick calls Elizabeth and tells her he has lost communication with Fifield and Milburn. Yannick follows the others out to the structure while David is left behind. As they leave, David cryptically tells Charlie to be careful. While the others are looking for the two lost men, David drives into the building with one of the vehicles. Only Meredith knows where he is. He opens a door that no one else has seen. It leads him to a room full of the same vases he carried back to the ship. After giving Meredith a good view of the room with his body cam, he switches it off. Meredith does not expect this, and she curses under her breath. Meanwhile, the others had gotten to the chamber where the snake-like creature attacked Milburn and Fifield. They find Milburn, while Fifield is nowhere to be found. Something is also happening to Charlie Holloway. The red spots in his eyes have grown, and he feels groggy. He sits down while Elizabeth checks him. Yannick and the others help him out while Elizabeth radios back to the ship for a medical team to be on standby. Meanwhile, David is now in the control room of the building. He presses some buttons that bring holographic engineers into the room. The engineer at the control console touches some buttons, and a display appears. It shows the universe with Earth specifically marked. Through all this, David is watching. He climbs up the console to get a better look. Suddenly, everything disappears, and he is alone again. However, the holographic image of the Earth remains for a short while as the console powers down. David then finds the body of an engineer in what resembles a tomb. Charlie's skin begins changing as they make their way to the ship. When they get to the ship, he tells Meredith to torch him. The others restrain Elizabeth while this happens. She sobs and screams as she sees him burning. David collects Elizabeth's cross in case it is contaminated and tells her she is three months pregnant. She insists she can't be pregnant, never mind three months pregnant. David tells her that it is not a normal fetus. She begs him to remove it, but he declines, saying that they don't have the personnel to deal with matters like this. He then talks about the similarity between her father's and Charlie's life's end. She dazedly asks him how he knows about how her father passed away, and he tells her point blank that he watched her dreams. Sometime later, Ford and another person come to wake her up, and she pretends to be unconscious. When they try to lift her up, she attacks them and escapes to the cabin with a machine that can perform operations. She programs the machine for an abdominal surgery and gets in. The machine removes an octopus-like creature from her womb. She frantically gets out of the machine, leaving the creature inside. Meanwhile, Yannick notices that Fifield is just outside the ship. He radios the support crew to open the door for Fifield. However, it is a changed Fifield that is outside. He attacks a few crew members before being put down. In another part of the ship, Elizabeth stumbles into a room. This is where we find out that Mr. Wayland, the owner of the company financing the expedition, is alive. David rushes to cover her with a coat and guides her into a chair. Elizabeth tells Mr. Whalen that she was wrong about the engineers and that they should leave this planet. Whalen disagrees and says they can't leave now that they are so close to finding the answers they are looking for. She returns to where she finds Charlie's ring by the washstand. She changes her mind and begins suiting up. Yannick comes in to tell her that he is done and wants to go home. He explains that this place was just a military base of some sort for the engineers, but their weapons turned on them. Wayland and Meredith have a tense discussion. Afterwards, Wayland, David Elizabeth Ford and others head out to the engineers' military facility. David leads them to the chamber he found before. Yannick looks at the 3D rendering of the chamber and discovers it is a ship. Meanwhile, David explains that the engineers were in the process of leaving before things went awry. He adds that they were headed for Earth. Wayland asks to see the engineer that is still alive. David opens where it is lying, and the engineer steps out. David tries to speak with the engineer, but it attacks him and the others. Only Elizabeth Shaw escapes. As Wayland leaves, he says that there is nothing. However, David's head is still alive. Meredith, Yannick, Ravel and Chance are shaken by what they just witnessed. But they start prepping the ship to return to Earth. Meanwhile, the engineer starts up his ship. The air from the exhaust knocks Elizabeth down and carries her towards the entrance of the military facility. As she runs towards the human ship, gaps start appearing in the ground and it becomes clear that even the ground is a part of the military installation that the engineers built. Yannick sees her and contacts her. With no hope of getting to the ship, she begs Yannick to prevent the engineer's ship from leaving the planet. Meredith is not having any of it. Seeing that she can't persuade Yannick, she runs off to the escape pod. Ravel and Chance stay back with Yannick. However, the escape pod crashes shortly after leaving the main ship. Yannick flies his ship straight into the engineer's ship. The impact causes the engineer's ship to crash. The crashed ship keeps rolling about till it eventually crushes Meredith Vickers. Elizabeth narrowly escaped being crushed. She then makes her way into the ship from Earth as her oxygen levels are low. She heard a noise on the ship. It turns out to be the creature that she birthed. It had grown enormous. David informs her that the engineer is coming for her. She defeats him by offering him to the octopus-like creature. David informs her that the engineers have other ships. 
trips. She goes into the crashed engineer ship to get him. She tells him that she isn't going back to Earth. She now wants to discover why the engineers that created humans also wanted to destroy them. She puts David's head in a bag and zips it. Elizabeth writes a report and leaves the planet in an engineer spaceship. The last scene shows a different kind of creature emerging from the body of the engineer devoid of life by the octopus-like creature. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below and if you liked the video please like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.